Hello, all my Tumblr makers. Okay, we are gonna go back to the basics on this one. We, my whole goal in my channel was to kind of start at the beginning and work from the bottom up and so that everyone can kind of come up to speed with us um, as they're learning how to make a Tumblr and kind of follow step by step. However, I got so many requests for that Bumblebee cup that I jumped ahead and went ahead and did that one for you guys because I know there's also advanced Tumblr makers that are watching um, and they kind of want to know some of my more advanced Tumblrs. So I put that one out for you guys. I hope you're having fun with it, creating some gorgeous stuff. Um, and then I also updated my geode because I know a lot of you are out there making these geodes and I want to make sure you saw that there are some updated ways to do it that make it go a little faster. Um, so those why I kind of jumped ahead and did those two. But now we're going to go back to the basics and we're going to do a glitter tumbler and we're going to do it using the hang method. I'm going to show you and prove some of you guys wrong. There's some people who've called me out saying you can't do this, it doesn't work. And da -da -da. I do it every day. These two cups were done using that method. method. Um, it's, it uses very, very, very little epoxy, like two mLs and usually I have a little left over. Um, I probably have a little left over because I've done it so many times now. Um, but just to start as a newbie, let's get you doing it with two mLs. Um, I'm going to use and I'm going to mix on camera today. You usually don't one because I have to wear my chemical mask and you can't really hear me as well. But two, because most of you know how to mix epoxy and understand. And three, because you were saying there's no way I'm doing it with two mLs and I'm going to show you how I do it today. So we're going to show um, the mixing of the epoxy on camera today so you can kind of get the gist of how it works. We're going to use it out of our small condiment bottles instead of out of my big two gallon jugs. Um, that way you have a little more control about how much epoxy you're using because you're using such a small amount It's really hard to get that tiny amount out of those big jugs So if you don't have these condiment bottles, I recommend getting these um, and using it for your part A and part B um, And then I snip the tip of the A because it makes it come out a little quicker because A is very thick So it's hard to work with sometimes. So this is going to be A and B. We've got our glitter our paint our little medicine cup to mix our um, epoxy in scissors um, my my tape uh, taped on uh, marker with the uh, popsicle sticks. If you don't know what this is, go back a couple of videos and check out my how to prep a cup. It'll talk to you about this little tool. Um, you need it for edging your cup. It makes a great line. Uh, popsicle stick, gloves, electrical tape, and a torch. I have a torch ready. I don't need the torch now, but I'm gonna use it today just so that anybody that's new to this style, it makes it a little easier because you heat up your epoxy a little bit. It moves a little bit easier. Um, for, so when you're learning, it makes it a little easier for you. I don't, at this point, I skip that step. It's just another step because I can, I can get the epoxy moving with just my hands, but because I've done it a ton. Also make sure you wear your chemical mask. You'll see later in the video when we start doing that, I definitely wear it. Then I have this tray ready to do, um, catch my fallout for my glitter so I don't waste glitter. I can save it. And then you also want to have a drying rack on hand um, to do the actual method. Okay, so I'm going to jump in. I'm going to get this cup prepped for you guys and we'll be back and start the next step. Um, again, if you don't know how to prep a cup and get it started, jump back a few videos, check out that uh, cup prepping video. Okay, guys, we are back and I have got the cup prepped. I'm already wearing my chemical mask. It's very sexy. Um, I'm ready to do the epoxying. Um, I got my mask on already because I didn't want you guys to have to wait for this video while I hook it on and put it on my face. So I'm just trying to talk really loud so you can hear me. So you see, I've got the cup prepped. I'm gonna, I painted it blue because my glitter is kind of this pretty blue aqua. It's called Peacock. I've got the edge taped off. I'm gonna leave that tape there for this part of the process. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my epoxy. I've got the camera angled so you can see down in my little cup. Sorry, it's really hard to breathe in this sometimes because I'm talking so loud and hard that it's taking my breath away a little. Okay, so um, you're gonna see, I mix in one cup because you're literally mixing such a small amount that you don't need two cups. It's, it's almost impossible. So I just take my little condiment bottle. You see I've snipped the tip just a little bit to be able to get a little extra out a little quicker because it goes very, very slow if you don't. And then what I do is I just put a little zhuzh in the corner on this side. Just, just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Let that drip, one drip. Okay. Replace the lid. You can see there's like a, just a dab in the bottom, okay? Again, I don't normally mix for one because usually when I'm doing this, I'm doing like three or four cups. And then I just, there, if you don't, if I'm very good at eyeballing this, I've actually, I'm a hairstylist, so I mix hair color all day. And I'm very good at knowing visually what it looks like. But if you have a hard time and you're not, get, you're not getting your ratios right, you can put it on a scale and set it to grams and then match the gram. So one or two grams or one half a gram or whatever, 
and match the grams. And then I still stir this really, really well and scrape just like I would normally. And just, I mix aggressively. It doesn't matter if there's bubbles in this because it's going to be under glitter, so you won't see them anyway. But you can see there's just a tiny, tiny bit here. I'm going to use this to glitter my cup. Okay? So just aggressive there. And then I'm going to take this tray out. I was just mixing it on the tray in case I spilled. I don't want to mess up my pretty white background. Okay? Then I'm going to take my, my drying stand. Oh, I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to try to angle this in here so you can see the cup really well. I'm going to put the cup on my drying stand. Let me make sure. Okay, that's right under the camera. I want to make sure you guys can see this well. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to take this little bit of epoxy and I'm going to scrape it out here onto the bottom. You can see it's just hardly any epoxy. It's amazing. So, here we go. Just get it all out. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't even say this registers. If you even try to look on the side of this medicine cup, it doesn't even get, it doesn't even go up the side of the cup. So it won't even show you if you're at 2.5 mils because it's not, it's not quite there yet. Okay, so I'm gonna take this tiny little bit of epoxy and I'm gonna work it just to the outer edges. And then I'm gonna start sliding it down the cup. It's gonna be difficult. You have to actually, I'm holding it with my other hand to hold it steady and to press. And you press, I'm pressing very hard and pushing. And just pushing this epoxy down the cup. Here, I'll do one on this side of the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I press it and slide it down the cup. You can feel when the cup has epoxy on it because it gets real slick and slippery and it's easy. So when you hit that spot where it's kind of your finger sticks, that means there was no epoxy there. So you just keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. And you can see, I've got this epoxy pulled all the way to this edge of this tape. Same, and then I just keep going and I just keep working it. If I get to a spot where I literally just run out of anything to move, you just go across the top, bring it down and slide it down. And again, you can feel when your finger sticks, that means there's no epoxy there. If it just kind of slips over, that means you've got a little epoxy on there and you can just keep moving. So I just keep pressing you can slide from the top, bring a little down, push. You can actually, this is how I do a lot of my final coats because I don't want to add any more weight to the cup. I don't need a big thick layer. So I do my sanding, get it nice and smooth and beautiful. And then I do a quick hang method over the top to get it shiny again. Instead of using like 15 mLs and it just shines up that surface and makes it smooth again and really pretty. Okay, in that fast, I have this cup covered in epoxy. I do one little loop loop along the edge of the tape to make sure I got it all the way up to the tape. I do a swoop across the top to make sure there isn't a puddle or anything left over, which there was a little too much. If you put too much on for your final coat, you will get ripples because it's going to try to sink down the cup and it's going to dry as it's sagging down the cup. You do this and do this with just one, two mLs, very little, and that way there's no extra uh, epoxy on the cup that's going to slide down the cup. Okay. Um, so if you are getting ripples in your epoxy, it's because you're using too much. Okay. Um, and if you have a hard time getting that one or two ml, those two little mLs to move on your cup, again, torch it, use your torch to heat it up just a little bit and it'll move a little easier for you. Um, now I don't have an issue. So, um, I, like I said, I, I didn't do it in this video. I should have actually showed you guys torching, but just do a quick little over the top and it'll warm it up just a little bit and, and then stir it and it will give it a little smoother consistency and a little easier to work with for you. Okay, so now we're gonna do some glittering. Uh, I guess I shouldn't have taken that glove off. Okay, so now I've got my glitter. I'm gonna use my, pe it's Peacock, I guess is the name. I don't even re really remember. It doesn't have a label on it anymore. It's been a while. I just picked this one because it's a nice bright color for you guys to see. Okay, I'm just checking the cup real quick up close to make sure I got, I could see it right up in front of my face to make sure I got it really well covered. It's kind of hard to see working sideways. And it looks good. I'm just rolling it around and just looking up close to make sure there's not any spots. Okay, so we're good. Okay, so I'm going to move my drying rack. You're going to put 
this here, and then you're just going to sprinkle it on. So I put the glitter on and then shake, and it just kind of sifts out and covers more cover. It gets more, covers more space instead of just that one little spot you dropped your glitter. Wow, this glitter color. I haven't actually ever used this. I just bought it as like a little sample off a random place to try, and I was like, sure, I'll try it. This is the first time I'm seeing it. It is actually very beautiful in, in, in person. There we go. Okay, so we'll run out of here. So I'm gonna slide my cup onto my drying rack over here off camera, and I'm gonna take this glitter. And carefully get some of it back into this bottle. I know, I wanna cry that little bit that I already spilled. I love, I love my glitter. Okay, my cup. And that's why I don't like those shaker bottles, guys. I like it really easy. I just like the top of my glitter to be easily accessible so when I have to do that, I don't have to try to pop the top off the shaker. It's just, it's just my personal way. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, it's fine. I'm not, you don't have to do it. But I like these open cap glitters because they're just, for me, they're a lot easier to work with. I'm just gonna go along the edge real quick, make sure it's done. And just like that. Now I will let this dry overnight before I epoxy it. Technically, you really only have to wait like eight hours, nine hours. And if you really need, want to, you can seal over the top. I don't because it's all one color glitter. So even if it's moving, the glitter moves a little bit, but it doesn't really move that much once you've epoxied it because it's gonna stick down to this epoxy. Okay, so just like that, you've got a glittered cup. It, you only ever need, with this method, when, when you base paint the color that's like complementary to the, the epoxy that you're using, then you only need, with this method, you only ever need one coat. I've never had to do a second coat because it grabs and holds really well to that epoxy and dries onto that epoxy really, really well. There's a spot right there on the bottom that needs a little more. Boop, boop, boop. Um, so that's that. Um, if you're doing a chunky glitter, at this point, you'll hang it on your, um, I should have done a chunky glitter. Shoot, now I'm thinking back. I should have done a chunky glitter on this one just to show you this example. But if you do a chunky glitter, let me wake up some on my sleeve. Let me show you the technique that you would use to work with the chunky glitter. So you're going to stick this back on your uh, hanger, your drying rack. I'm sorry. I'm going to put my gloves back on. Oh, boy. Okay, sorry. I'm putting my gloves on, you guys. And I try to not, I always try to be more prepared than this, but I just, it just occurred to me that you guys are probably going to have some questions about chunky glitter, um, and I want to kind of... Beat that beat you to the punch on that one. Okay, so we're gonna whoop, 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 put my gloves back on. So if this was chunky glitter, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hands and press down on the cup and push that chunky glitter onto that epoxy. Okay, just like this. I just use my two gloved hands. You're gonna get a little glitter on your hands. That's fine. There's so much glitter on the cup that doesn't matter. So you're just going to go all the way around it just like that and just press the cup with the chunky glitter and it will push all the chunky flat on your cup, making it extremely easy to do your next layers of epoxy to get it nice and smooth. So this cup, you can see this is a big chunky glitter. I have, um, I mixed a fine and chunky. Whenever I do a chunky, I also mix a fine color into it that's complementary. Sorry guys, I got to keep the mask on. I'm, I still have that epoxy next to me. Um, so I got to keep talking through this thing. So um, I mix a fine glitter and a chunky glitter when I do a chunky. That way the fine glitter will fill in any little cracks and still leave sparkle between the big chunky pieces. And you can see this when I did this with the hang method, the glitter all lays flat. This is, a, you can see it's got a very smooth surface. This one actually only has one coat of epoxy on it and it has very, very few bumps or ripples. It's almost ready. You could do just very light sanding and actually put your decal on one more coat and it would be done. So this method makes the glitter lay so flat that you don't hardly need any epoxy to cover it. Um, and that's why I really, really like it. So you can see, I'll bring this bad boy back into frame. It's gorgeous, okay? So we are gonna, I'm gonna jump off camera because you're probably tired of listening to talking me talking through this mask. We're gonna let this dry and we will come back for the next stage of epoxy coating it on the turner. Okay guys? Woo! And there's a little outtake for you.
Okay, so we you could see it's um, all ready to go. Um, I've got it the, the top taped off because uh, after the epoxy method, you got to remember to always remove your tape. So it uh, cured with no tape. So I re-taped it so we can, because um, you want to pull it away, because if you wait and it, the epoxy from the hang method dries over the top and you go to pull it, you're going to rip away some of the glitter um, as you go because it's, it's cured up. So you want to do that before it cures. You're going to see right after I finish this video, I'm going to show you, I pull the tape immediately. So um, I accidentally screwed up on my tape, and so I have a little top piece there. I will fix that in post Post production, I will fix that uh, up, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys this because I wanna get this video out for you guys. Um, so I've got the edge taped, the um, epoxy method. I did epoxy method. It's probably been about 11 hours since I did the epoxy method, so it's not completely cured, but it's cured enough to where we can go ahead and add the next layer of epoxy. So I've got my torch on hand and ready to go. I've got my A and B epoxy. Um, I've got my two medicine cups, I've got my popsicle stick, and I've got my application uh, brush for putting it on. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix, and I, well, I guess I'm doing this as a newbie tutorial. So I'm gonna mix a part A and part B, so I will do this on camera today. Normally I don't, but since the whole purpose of this tutorial is to teach all of our new tumbler makers how to do this, I will do it. So we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna fill this up. I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna use the little lines and I'm gonna bring this up to, I'm sorry, it's hard, the lighting is so bright that I don't, actually can't hardly even see. So I'm gonna put it down here because it might be easier for me this way. Oh yeah, I can see it better. Sorry, I couldn't see it. Oh, uh, a little more. I'm gonna probably make a little more than necessary because I've got some keychain projects <laughs> that I know are sitting over there that I need a little excess epoxy for. So if I have a little extra, I've got stuff that needs it. So I'm not too worried about over, over uh, mixing. Okay, and then you just use the lines to match them up. So I will put them in the cups and match them up to the same. This one is at 7.5, so I'll fill this one up to 7.5. Oh, was that in camera? Sorry. This one is sitting at 7.5, so I'm gonna fill the second cup up to 7.5. B always comes out a lot faster than A, so you have to be a little careful about almost getting too much because it comes out so quick. You have to be very, very mindful of how fast it's coming out. Otherwise, you'll end up with different amounts. Okay, this is absolutely perfect, dead on the nose. Okay, so then again, I'm not gonna worry about bubbles as I mix because it's gonna, one, it's over glitter, so it's, it hides all the micro bubbles anyway, but two, I'm gonna use my torch to, to get rid of the bubbles um, Anyway, so I, <laughs> this is not the way they show you to do it, but it works for me. If it doesn't work for you, don't do it this way. Do what works for you. But I am a furious mixer. I just go to town and mix away. And I don't do it slow. I, you can go real slow and avoid bubbles, but I don't really worry about that. Like I said, because I'm going to torch it and pop all the bubbles anyway. So you can see I'm just, I'm a, a very aggressive stir. And you want to always scrape your popsicle stick to make sure you got all the, the epoxy, because sometimes like A will be stuck to the stick and if you're just spinning like this and it doesn't get off, but then you wipe that off and you put it on your cup, it's not mixed with B, um, so it won't cure. So I always scrape my stick a couple times and I always really scrape the side walls of the cup very well to make sure I get it. And I'm always scraping the bottom across the bottom as I'm stirring. Okay. Okay, and so today, I am going to apply with, and I could put this actual popsicle stick right down on this mat because this is a silicone mat and it won't stick. Um, epoxy does not stick to silicone. So this is a silicone makeup brush. You guys have asked a lot of questions about these. Um, I will put the link to get these um, in the drop down menu. So check that out as well. This is an applicator brush. I'm gonna use this today because I'm supposed to be wearing nitrile gloves, um, but I am still waiting on my order. So I don't want my skin to necessarily come in contact or my gloves to come in contact. So I'm just gonna scoop this out with my brush and I'm gonna just brush it on just like you would with a paintbrush. And that way your glove does not come in contact because um, I did not know this, but um, the epoxy can actually go, the part B of the epoxy will actually penetrate regular latex gloves um, and you don't want that. So especially if you have an allergy. So you wanna be wearing nitrile gloves. Those are the ones that are purple or blue usually, 
but they're always labeled nitrile. So I, I actually thought when people were saying, oh, wear nitrile gloves, that that was a brand of latex gloves. I didn't realize it was a, a style of gloves or a type of glove. So I, uh, I just bought regular latex and then somebody, awesome person mentioned it um, in one of my comments on my videos and said, you know, you should be wearing these nitrile gloves. And I was like, I do. And she said, nope, you're wearing latex gloves. And that's when I realized it's not a brand name, it's actually a type of glove. So. I ordered a bunch because I am very safety first. Oh my gosh, you guys, you got me talking and I'm not wearing my mask. Okay, I'm gonna pause here because I'm putting on my mask. I don't like to epoxy at all without my mask. But I got chit-chatting with you guys and I got distracted, so I'm gonna stick that bad boy on. So it's gonna be real hard to hear me in it for a minute, guys, because I'm gonna wear my mask. As I'm talking about safety with the nitrile gloves, I forgot my safety with my, so now I'm gonna sound like Darth Vader breathing through this sucker and talking to you guys. I'm going to try to talk a little louder to make sure you guys can hear me. Okay, so these these uh, little brushes are great for app applying. You can kind of move the epoxy if you have an area that has too much epoxy and one that doesn't. You just kind of move that epoxy around. I'm just making sure it's all the way around up at the top by the, by the, uh, where we taped off and bring it around back and forth. Making sure it's coated real well. I know this is boring, but I, this is meant to be something for people who don't really understand how to do this. I want to make sure you guys see the whole process. Normally I would switch. I'm actually going to, maybe I will, I'm going to cut out right now. I'm almost done. Eh, I'm almost done. I was going to say I'm going to put you guys on time lapse, but I'm just coming up to the bottom here. So we'll just go ahead and keep going. Okay, and then the last little bit I scrape out and that's gonna go on the bottom. And I'm just gonna push it around all over the bottom, make sure it's well coated. Okay, there we go. Looks like it's pretty well coated. The bottom is covered. This is not a super thick layer, guys. I'm not doing a flood coat for this. I'm just getting the basic coat over the glitter, making it ready to get ready for our fun decals and stuff. Okay, whatever you want. I might even leave this color. This is just so pretty, this glitter. I don't know if the camera's catching all the purple down, kind of buried down inside of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so now we're here. I've got the whole cup is covered. You saw I didn't have to make any contact with the cup. This brush applies very, very well. I'm just gonna stick, stick it right down on the mat because again, this is a silicone mat and a silicone brush, so none of this epoxy will stick to these items. And I'm gonna show you, I immediately pull my tape. Once I know that I am done, I, I always leave this little tag, as you've seen in my video for prepping your cup, I leave the little tag so it's easy to just grab. You're not hunting for the, the uh, edge of your tape. And I just pull it off immediately. There's no need to wait to pull the tape. The epoxy at this point will actually stay in place. It doesn't seep and you get a really nice line. If you wait almost too long, the epoxy gets sticky and stringy. So when you pull it, it pulls little strings of epoxy up and then you have a lot more to clean off. Um, as this line is so nice and clean, I can just go with a little tiny, like a, maybe a Q-tip with just a tiny bit of acetone and catch like there was a little piece. I'm sure you guys saw it go by with a little bit of spray paint and just clean that off. And you can see the edge of this is done really nice. See, there's that little bit of paint. So I can get that with a little Q-tip, but you can see the edge of this is really nice. So you wanna pull your tape right away if you've taped off the top. And uh, there you go. So I'm gonna let this bad boy spin until tomorrow and we will come back and I will show you our next steps. Okay, I said we'd be back. And we are back. I forgot to show you guys uh, the torching. Here we go. So this is this is just a simple torch. I put I will put the link to buy one of these if you don't have one. These are amazing. I'll put the link down in the drop down menu as well. So this you fill up just like you would a Zippo uh, a lighter, cigarette lighter. It has a little hole in the bottom. You take the butane. I buy my butane at Home Depot, and you'll stick the tip of the butane in there. Hold everything up and press it for five seconds. Release. Press it for five seconds. Release, and it will fill this bad boy up with butane. 
Then you want to open the open it up. You see mine is very heavily used. And push the back and you get a nice flame. And you want to move very quickly. If you wait too long and you stand, stay too long, you will actually burn the epoxy. And it will actually crust up and get weird on you. I've done it, that's how I know. So this is just gonna pop all the micro bubbles. You don't see them, but they are there and they will make the surface of this rough. Um, so you wanna pop the, even though you can't see them, you always kinda wanna torch over your cup just to make sure you're popping all the bubbles and along the bottom as well. But you wanna move quickly. Also, if you get foggy, if your uh, epoxy gets foggy, it's because you've heated it up, you've held the this too long. You, that's actually like what it looks like kind of when it's burned. So it will get a foggy look because you've put too much heat on it. That's why you want to move it quick, like you would like moving a blow dryer so you don't burn your head. You want to move this quick. So that just uh, popped all the little micro bubbles that are in this, and it's just going to uh, dry pretty smooth. It'll, it's only its first layer over the glitter, so you'll still be able to feel probably a little bump here and there and stuff through the glitter. Um, and so we'll do a second coat, but that's your first coat. And this is super simple. Um, and just don't forget to torch. Okay. All right, guys, we're back with this cup. Um, in this little section, we're going to clean it, prep it, get the decal on and prepare it to, uh, for its next round of epoxy. So first I'm going to clean up the edge, um, just a little bit. There's a tiny bit of epoxy and paint where I don't want it. So I'm going to use my knife. This is, um, become, this blade has become one of my junkier ones. So see what I do is I just basically press into the epoxy with the, the edge and then I'm going to lift and try to scrape that off just a little bit and see if I can get it. If it's more difficult, see that just came right off. If it's more difficult, you can mess with it with acetone for a bit um, and clean it off. And then I've got, I think that's the only spot, that's where my tape seam was. And there always seems to be just a teeny, teeny bit of epoxy on there. The rest of the line looks really nice. Um, so now I'm just going to do this. I'm going to get that paint off. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I use my acetone. I'm going to be super duper careful. I'm wearing a glove so I don't ruin my nails. Girl, girl stuff. Um, and I'm going to, uh, this is my, this pumps up acetone. So I'm going to use this and I'm just going to use that tiny bit, one pump. That's all you need. I'm going to hold this very carefully and I'm going to take the edge of this, uh, just so I, I don't want it slopping all over because this will, um, affect the uh, the epoxy if you get it on your epoxy. So I'm just, see, I'm just very carefully running it on the edge to clean that paint. I'm using the edge of the towel, I mean the uh, coffee filter. That way I don't have this big fuzzy cotton ball accidentally brushing onto my epoxy. And I don't, you also don't want to use cotton because you don't want the fuzz balls because if you're going to do another layer of epoxy and you leave a fuzz ball, it leaves a lump in your epoxy. All right, so there we go. We clean that paint off. You can see just a little bit. Okay, we're gonna move that off to the side here. Take my glove off, we'll move all our tools out. Okay, so now I'm gonna tape it off and get it ready for the next round of epoxy because again, since we're putting another layer of epoxy, we gotta retape this silver part. So I'm just gonna take my tape, get a chunk, and I'm gonna follow, oops, something fuzzy stuck, I mean, a piece of paper is stuck on there. I'm just gonna follow the same line. Sometimes I go up like a third of a millimeter, like just enough to where you can just barely see some of the silver through it, so that you know you're not, that you know that it's gonna get a good seal on that steel. At least a tiny, tiny sliver. That's why I'm being a little more careful with this one, uh, just to make sure I get it with just, I mean, it is like a hair above the glitter. And that's just so you get a nice seal over your glitter and onto the stainless steel with the edge of the epoxy. So that way, when they're washing it or uh, using it, uh, it, it holds a really good seal. Okay, then you see I have my tail, which I always do, and I lift it up and make a tab. Pull that fuzzy off and make a tab. That way it's easy to pull off. Okay, so now we have the cup and we're going to put this big, beautiful lion on here. So I showed you coming into this or just following this segment, I'm going to show you 
um, what this looked like when I was printing it out in de design space. So I did the image as a print and cut. This is done on sticker paper. So I print and cut on sticker paper. Then I take the same image in the same screen and I will turn it to a, a cut, not a print. So I'll have two. One, the top one will be a print and cut and will be all in color. And the bottom one will be the exact same shape, same size and everything, and you'll turn it to cut. So you'll do, basically when you you'll load this image in, you'll you'll bring it to the size that you want, then you'll duplicate it and you'll turn one to cut, not just print. So one will have absolutely no image on it, it'll look gray. That's gonna be your piece of vinyl. So if you look real careful, you can kind of see the edge of the edges on this one. But you I'm, I laid it over vinyl. You don't have to. If you want to be slightly transparent, it won't go totally transparent like a, a water slide, but if you want a little transparency through it, you wouldn't back it. You would just stick it on your cup, put the epoxy over it, it will go slightly transparent so you'll kind of see what's behind it a little bit. Um, the glitter definitely won't shine through, but the shadow of the glitter behind it will. But I want this one to be completely opaque, so I backed it with the vinyl. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying you do one in color and you do one in that you turn to cut. So you do one print and cut and one cut of the exact same size and everything. Then you're gonna lay, when you, you print, cut them both out and then you're gonna lay the printed one over, very carefully over the top of the vinyl and this is what you'll end up now. Um, so just following the segment, I'll have the pictures pop up so you can see on the screen what I had and what I was working with. And then, and this is what I then ended up with. So this, I don't need a, a transfer paper. I'm just gonna peel it off just like you would any other sticker. I'm gonna decide where I want it on the cup. I'm gonna put it right in the middle. I put sometimes put my designs a little higher because if I'm gonna list it, let's say on Etsy and somebody wants to add a name, there's a good spot to put the name here if they want, because if you put it right in the middle, maybe, but they might wanna be able to put the words here, but they can also you know, put the words vertical there but I'm gonna put this one a little bit higher up so what I do is I stick to the middle and then I work my way out that way I know I get the middle lined up perfect and then I push out and that way I know it's um, not crooked because I can I line up like the eyeballs straight all right so there we go And there we go. So there is this cup. This is your next step on the glitter, a glitter cup. Um, I'm gonna epoxy this. I'm not gonna do it on camera. I don't wanna waste your guys' time. You don't, you've already seen me epoxy this first one. It's gonna be exact same process. So I'm gonna epoxy over the top of this. I'll do two layers and I we will come back with the finished product. Actually, I'm gonna jump back on here because I know I'm gonna get questions about this. This is printed with a laser, I mean, sorry, this is printed with an inkjet printer and I don't seal it. Um, it doesn't, it, the, the, the sticker paper seems to absorb this, uh, the ink so well that it, it's, not, it's not waterproof technically, but I also, it doesn't smear or blend or blur at all under the epoxy and I've had no problems with it. So no, I do not seal this. This is not a water slide, this is sticker paper. So this is not sealed, even laser printer, inkjet printer, it doesn't matter, you don't have to seal it. If you wanna seal it, you can. It doesn't change anything. Um, if it just makes you feel better and more comfortable doing it, that is totally fine. It doesn't hurt the sticker. Um, if, but again, it will go transparent even with the sealer because the sealer is wet and liquidy and it's gonna affect the paper and it's gonna do the same um, slight transparency as it does with the epoxy. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna um, stop that. Um, it actually does the exact same thing. So if, again, if you want it to be completely opaque, um, then put it with a vinyl backing. If you wanna have some transparency, just place it straight with no vinyl backing, and this is does not need to be sealed. Okay, we are gonna jump back into epoxying this bad boy. Okay, we are back. Here is the cup. It has about uh, two layers of epoxy on it. I ran it twice with two layers, and as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. The color just exploded and just really popped once it was under the epoxy, and I knew that's what was gonna happen, um, that these bright colors would just really, really, really get um, bright and shiny under this beautiful glass of this uh, epoxy. Um, so we've got a nice little straight line up here. The sticker is well stuck down, um, no issues. It's nice and smooth. The whole cup is smooth. It didn't need any sanding. That's why I like this um, hang method to do your glitter because you really have to do very, very minimal sanding or if at all. This one didn't need any sanding um, because the glitter is so pressed down so tight to that uh, epoxy that it holds and doesn't uh, make it rough and lumpy. So this cup is done. It's beautiful. Um, I will let it cure for three days before it finds a new home. 
Um, and if you guys like this video and if it was good information, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Also feel free to leave in the comments any suggestions you think I should do with these videos. I'm really trying to make these guys for you. This is not for me. I wanna make sure I'm doing it in a way that you guys are understanding what I'm saying. So feel free to comment down below. Um, I will have a list of all the supplies you need in the drop down menu. Just push the little down arrow and the menu will come down with a bunch of links and things where you can easily shop for the supplies you need. Um, and also some links for some a fun Facebook group that I have that we do and, and all that and all the good stuff for you guys. So just check all that out. Give us a thumbs up. Um, so su subscribe to my channel if you want to keep uh, seeing more videos from me. Also, if you want to know when I pr put a new video out, uh, click the ring, the the ringer, the bell, or whatever you guys want to call it. And that will notify you every time I drop a video. And I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Have fun creating.